What's up guys? So tonight we're going to do a little experiment making some custom scales. I just got these very simple, very cheap silicone molds from Amazon. I've already cleaned with alcohol and installed these white G10 liners. I want that to be the base of my scale. So they're already in there. So we're going to mix up some epoxy here. I'm going to show you what we're doing. After that, I'm going to install this blue Scotch Bright pad and this purple acrylic scale. I'm going to make all of this one piece and then shape all of it to fit a knife and use that for the scales. So just bear with me. I don't know how long this is going to take. I have done epoxy work before. However, I've never done it on camera, so I'm sure I'm going to be a little bit clumsy. I'm probably going to make some mistakes as I go. The first thing I'm going to do is getting our epoxy open. I'm going to pour it in this. Uh, I don't have an actual measuring cup, but I'm going to pour it in this Dixie cup. Get about the exact same amount. There we go. Put the lids back on. Now, I don't want the epoxy to be clear, so I have these mica powders that I'm going to add to it to color the epoxy. And first, we're going to be using black. I will do a part two to this to kind of show you guys the result. How it all turned out once it's ground. That's really the true test. Until you start grinding it and see how it all blends, you really don't know. You really don't know what you've done. So this mica powder colors the epoxy, and it takes very little of it, guys. This stuff goes a long, long way. Get that in there. We're gonna stir this up good. Some of you, if you've done a posse before, may notice uh, eventually that I am not using a vacuum chamber. Um, a vacuum chamber is recommended. However, I don't have one here just yet. And because this is a very slow setting epoxy this is not the five minute epoxy from the store this will take a couple of hours before it starts to set up and it'll be all night before it can come out of the tray and it'll be five or six days before i can start to work it but because it's such a slow setting epoxy it um any air bubbles that get trapped in it tend to kind of release themselves. If you're using five minute epoxy or even like Bondo boat resin, um, that won't work because it starts to set so fast it traps the air bubbles. I don't know if you noticed, but I've got two cups here. The reason for that is because even after I stir this, there's gonna be some corners I missed. There's gonna be some residue on the sides that get, didn't get stirred in. So. After I stirred this for a couple of minutes, I'm actually gonna transfer it to the other cup to make sure we get a really good mix because the quality of your epoxy really matters. Um, all I've been using lately, guys, is super clear. If you type in tabletop epoxy, it's usually the first thing that pops up on Amazon. I'm sure it can be bought cheaper. I'm sure there's there may even be better epoxies out there. I don't know. 
Um, I did my countertops in this stuff and it did exactly what it said it was going to do and the amount of time it said it was going to do it. So being a fan of consistency, I trust this stuff. All I'm doing now is just transferring it from one cup to another. And then I'm going to stir again to make sure I got a good even mix. And this mica powder, guys, does it just turn it black? It's like a metallic black. So you could just make knife scales out of just this stuff alone. But I'm looking for something that when I sand it has some pop, some, uh, some different colors. I'm also not using any release agents on my molds because they are silicone and epoxy will not stick to silicone. So I'm going to pour a light coat in the bottom here. Just enough to cover that white G10 liner. So this stuff is just beautiful as it is. You don't really have to add anything to it. But that's not the goal here tonight. This is just something that I kind of I kind of dreamed up. I have seen Scotch Bright my carta before, if that's what you want to call it. Basically, anything soaked in a resin is considered my card, I guess. Anything you want resin to stick to, you really want to make sure you clean it with, with alcohol. the last thing you want to do is end up with the product that you're looking for and realizing that the epoxy didn't stick. So alcohol is always the answer to that. Clean it good with alcohol. Make sure you've got a good bind. Like I said, guys, I've never actually done this particular project before, so there's a chance this could be an epic fail. We'll find out. I'm just slowly adding the epoxy. Letting it soak into the resin, or let it soak into the Scotch Bright. There will be some, some run over and stuff like that. That's all fine. We can move it around. You've got a little while too. If you have spills like I'm having on the counter here, um, you can wipe that up with some denaturized alcohol or uh, acetone. Anything like that will work. So now I'm just going to kind of poke at that Scotch Bright pad to make sure that epoxy gets soaked in there good. The last thing you want is to have voids or dry spots in that scotch bright that didn't soak up epoxy. Um, that won't be no good. That won't make an ice scale. That won't make anything because you won't be able to sand it. You sand into one of those dry spots and realize that all your time was wasted. 
And this is a time consuming process. However, it's one of those processes that you can move on and do other things while this is setting and drying and hardening, whatever. So it's not really costing you that much time because you're not having to work it anymore after this. You're just, uh, you just kind of leave it be. This stuff's absolutely beautiful when it pours out, guys. It, it's got that metallic mica powder running through it. Makes for a really pretty finish. You don't have to worry about getting it in the center there because it won't stick. All that, all that'll break off when you crack it out of the mold. I found this stuff to be very strong. I said I did my countertops in my kitchen with it. And like anybody else that has worked, that has worked with this stuff at all, once you work with it and you realize the beautiful colors and designs you can make with it, or actually that it makes on its own, you kind of get addicted, man. You, you start thinking, God, what else can I make out of this? And, uh, before you know it, you'll be epoxy and all kind of stuff. If you want to watch a true artist when it comes to epoxies, uh, check out check out Blacktail Studios. Cam, that's who I learned a lot of my stuff from. So, uh, shout out to my buddy Kyle for kind of turning me on to that guy. But he does some very expensive high dollar uh, black walnut epoxy river tables and he's even done some solid epoxy tables one of my favorite favorite episodes was when he uh he did a solid epoxy table and put a 90 degree bend in it all he had to do was set it in the sun um that was very cool to see it to see it bend and mold just because of the the heat of the sun so yes if you leave this stuff out in the sun enough it will soften up so let me uh give you guys a look at what it looks like right now so we're gonna leave that and come back for a part two and show you how uh, i'll come back when it's time to crack it out of the mold and then there will be a part three of me finishing it and installing it on a knife. So there you go, guys. Appreciate your time.